Hanging chain optimization problem involves finding the position of the chain given two endpoints, a length of the chain, and we want to minimize the total potential energy of this chain. So this is going to go, when you have it suspended between these two points, its shape of this chain is going to be determined by its minimum potential energy. If we have, for example, I'll just use this uh, cable right here for my headphones if I have endpoints right here okay and then I adjust the starting and end location you can see that the shape changes of this okay and we want to solve these equations to be able to determine the shape of this uh, chain between these two points so Here's the, uh, here's the math behind it. This was proposed by Hans Middleman. It's part of the COPS uh, benchmark set for optimization. We want to minimize the potential energy okay, with this integral right here, subject to the constraint on the length of the chain. And we have the end conditions, A and B. And there are various formulations of this problem are possible. We can discretize it. We can solve it in this time based way. So this isn't really time right here. That is position. Okay, but we're going to use some of the structure that we have for solving time optimization problems to solve this position problem as well. Now, we also have uh, the partial potential energy is going to be x2, and that's going to lead to our three differential equations that we have right here. So let's go ahead and set up and solve these. And we're going to have just a little bit more uh, additional information as well for this problem. We have that the initial right here, uh, these two, x2 and x3, those are going to start at 0. And this one's going to start at 1. So that's the endpoint of the other constraint. And then we have uh, the final condition is that this is going to be up at a value of b. And b uh, is going to be equal to 3 for this case, but we can adjust those endpoints. Now, we're going to go a total distance of 10. Okay, so this it says 1 right here, but we could go up to 10 if we wanted to. Okay, so it doesn't really matter in terms of uh, the length here. We can adjust these and get a different shapes. All right, and then we have the final condition for x3 is going to be equal to LP. So that one is going to be equal to 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up and solve this. Um, and also U value is going to be between negative 10 and 20. Okay, this is going to be our decision variable. And you can see that it might be constrained at uh, certain values right here. Uh, and we can also adjust those as well just to get um, more realistic uh, solutions in terms of uh, avoiding the constraints. All right, so I'm going to type this out and then we'll modify it a little bit as we go just to, um, for this problem. Okay, so we're going to say from Gecko, import Gecko. That's going to be our optimization platform that we're going to use. NumPy is going to help us set up some of these arrays. All right, and then we have matplotlib pyplot as plt. And then we're going to create our new gecko model. And we'll say remote equals false. And so that's going to solve it locally. We'll have 101 time points. And here we'll have lp is 4, b equals 3, a is 1. So b and a, are, those are uh, final and initial um, heights or elevations for the chain. All right, and then we have between 0 and 1. Okay, and we're going to have three variables. Um, I'll just limit those between 0 and 10. And then x1 value, we're going to give that initial value of A. Okay, I'm going to put my U value between negative 10 and 20. And then I'm going to have my Z values. Okay, those are going to be zero, just because I want to, um, at the very end, have a final parameter for the maximization. Okay, here are my three differential equations, dx1 dt, or position dx equals u. 
dx2 dx equals x1, okay, plus 1 plus u squared, and the square root of that. And then x3 as well. Okay, so now I have minimization. I'll put a thousand times. Okay, so this is my end point constraint. I'm going to do this with a soft constraint just to minimize the objective function at the end for those deviations. All right, and then I have my solver and I have my nodes. And then I'll put my I mode equals six. That's dynamic optimization mode. Now here's x2 times final. That's what I'm going to try to minimize in the end. So I have these three objectives here. Now those top two ones are just going to be zero at the end. We'll initialize uh, and then solve it. Okay, so I'm going to do time shift equals zero. So when you solve it again, it doesn't advance the initial condition. And then I'm going to turn the status on. So I'm going to initialize first, setting all the degrees of freedom equal to zero, just to solve the equations and get a feasible solution. Then I'll try to minimize the uh, total potential energy. Okay, in the end, we're going to create a figure that's going to be similar to this one that we showed up here on the plot. We want to get the chain shape, just to be able to see that. That's our x1 x2 value, that's our potential energy. And then x3 as well. Okay, so we have this plot that we're creating. And we'll create a bottom subplot as well for the u value. Okay, and then we'll put a grid on there as well. And we'll create our subplot. And the second one, I don't think I need that plot two, one, two. Um, I think I'll take that out. All right, and then put our U values on there. Okay. All right, so we've got our hanging chain problem. And we'll go ahead and solve this. Now you can see the initialization took um, it was 0.19 seconds for that. And then if you come down here to the final optimization solution, you can see 0.75. You can see the total objective function. And you can also see the solution here of x1, x2, and x3. And the red line is the shape of that chain. Okay, and then the green is our potential energy. We're trying to minimize the very final uh, point up there. Okay, so that became five point, uh, looks like it's 5.15. Okay, and there you can see the U value as well. All right, I'll put all of this information onto the course website. And that is going to be at apmonitor.com slash do. And let me just get you there. Okay, this one is going to be listed under these benchmarks here on the very right. So this optimal control problems benchmarks too. And if you go down, you'll see a number of different benchmark problems. The hanging chain problem is listed right here. And this will give the equations and a sample solution, also with the chain source as well. All right, and there's a little bit more information about Gecko Optimization Suite, where here's the documentation, or if you'd like to pip install Gecko, you also have some other information like Gecko publications and references and additional example problems 
and with Gecko, where you can try it online through Google Colab link, be able to solve it online. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. We'll uh, do additional problems on dynamic optimization and using the dynamics, differential and algebraic equations with an objective function to maximize profit, minimize waste, uh, minimize emissions, and um, maximize things like from reactors, uh, desirable products, or aircraft control, be able to minimize the uh, time to achieve stable flight. So many different optimization examples here. You've got other ones as well under benchmarks one. Benchmark one. Uh, these are very simple ones. Um, there's also some more right here on benchmarks three. This is a paper that we did for uh, one of the conferences, and you can see a number of other energy benchmark systems here uh, that describe load following and forecasting and um, multiple co-production, uh, co-generation, uh, tri-generation, and others. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to hear your feedback and suggestions for additional, additional applications.